Hey everybody, let's make some persimmon cranberry pudding today. I've got my nine inch bunt pan, um, lightly buttered it and I'll flour it a little bit. I'm gonna take a tablespoon of this baking soda and mix it into, I've got one and a half cups of pureed persimmon and I'm using the Hachaya persimmons, the big ones that were very ripe. And so if I mix that up and set it aside, it's just gonna make this gelatinous mixture and that's what I, that's what I want. I've got one and a half cups of all-purpose flour and then um, I'm gonna add to that a half a teaspoon of sea salt and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon in here. One teaspoon, supposed to, it's supposed to be freshly grated nutmeg, but I didn't have that. So I'm using regular grated nutmeg in here. And I'm just gonna add all that in and stir it all up. All right, we'll be needing three fresh eggs and two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. In a separate bowl, I have four tablespoons of butter, one and a half cups of light golden brown sugar pack it and then I'm going to just mix those two together and then I'm going to start adding in the eggs which I always crack them into a bowl first because just in case I get shells or I get a yucky egg I don't want to add it into everything and then you know not be able to take it out. I'm also adding in a quarter cup of this orange flavored liqueur Contro. Um, you could use rum but uh, that's really gonna make it super fragrant and nice in this pudding. I'm also adding in my two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm gonna mix that up really well. Now, what goes next in here? I believe we're gonna start zesting. Oh no, we're gonna add the persimmons. See how they kind of made this gelatinous cake? <laughs> so I'm gonna put those in there and then I'm just gonna use my little blender here and mix it up really good. And then, um, now I'm, I'm gonna be using the rind, the zest of one whole orange and the zest of one whole lemon, two, like two inches of minced ginger, and also um, one and a half cups of chopped fresh or frozen cranberries. Um, so that's gonna be set off to the side. In the meantime, I'm adding my flour mixture to the wet mixture. I'm just gonna fold it in and make sure that it's you know worked in there. Now I put in my rind and my ginger. That's gonna be mixed in. You can just imagine how good this is gonna smell when it's cooking. It's just gonna really fill the house with these beautiful Christmas smells. In go goes the cranberries and I'm using one cup of chopped walnuts. You can use pecans, but walnuts is what I had mostly on hand, and it's worked really well in the past. I'm thinking pecans would be another great choice. Um, so this is, gonna, uh, this is gonna be really a wonderful pudding. I'm going to heat up my pan over medium heat. I'm using a really big stock pot, and I put, um, this colander down, upside down at the bottom, and I fill up the water so that it almost covers the colander. So that's what my bunt pan is gonna sit on top of because this is gonna steam. So I'm going to fill this up, and you can tell I buttered my pan and I lightly floured it because I really hate it when anything sticks when I get cakes. And you try to like turn it over and get it out and it sticks and you're missing a really big piece. And when you have a really nice looking bunt pan, you don't want it being messed up like that. So, um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do is just smooth it out now what I have to do is cover it. If you have a bunt pan that has some sort of a cover on it, then that's ideal, but I really have never seen that. Um, so I'm gonna use foil. I'm gonna put it on crossways and mold it to the pan, and then I'm gonna use this twine and just tie it around and make sure that it's good and snug. Now very careful without burning myself, I'm gonna set it here on top of the colander and I'm gonna cover it up and this is gonna steam here for about two and a half hours. All right, I, I actually let it uh, cool down overnight just on the counter. I just didn't, it, since it's so soft, voila, I didn't want it to fall apart. And look, it didn't, it's gorgeous and it's still so soft and I'm just going to reheat it slightly before serving. You can serve it with a, a nice sauce, a Chantilly sauce or whatever you want. I'm just gonna serve it like this.
Oh, it smells so good. I wanted to wish you and your families a very Merry Christmas. We will be lighting the middle candle tomorrow on Christmas Day. I wanted to share today's Bible verse with you, which comes all the way back from Isaiah 714. Quote, All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. End quote. All right, guys, what a beautiful prophecy that was for telling the Son of God who was given to us to save the world from sin and make peace with God and give us a place to live for all of eternity. Praising Him today and praying that you have a very, very blessed Christmas and Happy New Year. See you next time. During a year where we're separated from those that we love and a lot of our family members, I decided to use this year for a year of reflection where I can just look back and really be appreciative of all those times that we were able to spend together with all of our family and visit and, um, and look forward to when that time will come again where we can all gather and enjoy each other's company once again. All right, I hope that you have a very lovely, lovely holiday and a most joyous and happy new year.